Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 36 of Direwolf20's server play series. Just chilling with Soren today. Hello. How's it going, buddy? Pretty good. 1-6 is on the way soon. Nice. That's good. I'm sure a lot of the uh, YouTube audience will be happy to hear that. That's pretty cool. Is it a, is it a tough one to do? I heard uh, liquids can be tough. Tedious. Yeah. It's all textures, so it's like... If I say texture A is in this folder, now I can say this folder contains texture A. Oh. So it's like not too bad. Almost. Nah, it's just rewriting things. It's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Now here's the real question. Can I move the pattern chest with a portal gun? That's a no. I can't uh, move the gravity gun. That's unfortunate. That's going to cause a mess. Incoming mess. Got it. Half of these patterns we probably don't even need anymore. Um, but that's okay. No biggie. All right. We were just expanding this room, as you guys can tell. I think it's a little bit nicer looking. Like, obviously, the design that we had fit but it was a little bit cramped um and i want to do a little bit in this room today i want to play with and make some clear glass because i don't have any zycraft glass so i want some clear glass Sorry. instead yeah it's all your fault i blame you uh, i'm thinking about using it for the for the villager trading area that we have set up or gonna set up over here so that's kind of the plan i don't know what you think about that soren but clear glass is awesome looking bump but bump uh, I, it's part of uh, Tinker's Construct, and the way you make it is actually pretty easy. You just throw um, some sand or something like that in here. But the problem is we're going to have to, you know, come up with a lot, and I mean a lot, of, um, you know, clear glass lava. if we really want to use it. So, well, yeah, we need lava, that's for sure. Um, and we definitely, well, yeah, we should probably automate some of the lava refilling of this thing, shouldn't we? I want to automate like pretty much everything that's part of the clear glass production line. So um, I'm going to make a few more of these basins. I'm going to make a few more of these spouts. And I'd like to have spouts like on all areas here. So I could have like, you know, at least six or eight of them. Maybe eight would be a nice round number. I feel like eight's a really good number, actually. And I think we could probably accomplish that. Like two on this side, three on this side, and three on this side. That'll do eight. As long as you can have a spout right above a smeltery, but I don't see why you couldn't. Are you going to take care of lava for us? Working on it. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're magma crucibling some netherrack. Okay, that's cool. As long as I can still get to my terminal for crafting. You said you have a bunch more of the smeltery brick things, right? They're in the chest beside it now. Seared bricks? I need the... They're in the chest to wear. Okay. Oh, in here. Yeah, I need the <clears throat> I need the non-block version. I need the item version. Oh, I didn't have those. I just mined it from a village. Oh, that's cool. Villagers have their own smeltery now? It seems so. I think that's where they sacrificed their members of life. You know. I like that. Clay, yes. huh? How am I for clay? Alright, I should be able to pull this off. All right, stack of 64, seared bricks ought to be enough to get what I want to get. So that's what I'm thinking, Soren. There's a couple stages to this build, though. I want to do more than just, you know, I want to automate it as much as I can. So I might be using a little bit of uh, Mine Factory Reloaded's Redneck controllers. Right right. clicking and placing blocks. <laughs> So let's see what kind of trouble we can come up with. Um, definitely going to want some casting basins. And I'm going to want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. Uh, so. Okay. What's that? I was trying to find the one I found earlier. I guess it might have been the AD system. Yeah, we have four. Okay. So one, two. We might need to bump the wall back one more. I think we only bumped it back one. I wanted to do 11 by 11. You know what I mean? 
Alright, and then what do we need to do? We need um, some drains, right? And we need some faucets. We're gonna need, I don't know, seven of them each. Smeltery drains and faucets. Ah, oh, so close. Are you still cooking things up I over here? I want something other than a 9x9? Nine nine? <gasps> it's an 11 by 11 to be fair. Right now it's 11 by 10 well, I said 11 by 11 and you made it 11 by 10 I made nothing of the sort. I just find <laughs> stuff. You did what now? You told me, hey, I want to expand this. And it's like, okay, you need to tell me your numbers. <laughs> Which oh, probably this done means melting, it was way? 9 by 8 before. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Alright, so here's a good demonstration of how this works, by the way, guys. You melt either sand or glass in here, and you get this cool stuff called molten glass. And it's enough, um, one block makes one block, basically. So I can, you know, pour this through into here, and it's going to go ahead and do its thing. So you can see it filling up. Now there's a little bit of tick rate lag on the server right now that we're trying to identify the cause of, so this is a little stuttery. So, you know... Please ignore the stuttering of the glass. But once it's poured in there, give it a, a few seconds, and it'll solidify into um, the hardened form of clear glass. Cool. Now, there's a couple things I want to test. Um, first off, I'm pretty sure that applying a redstone signal to the faucet will make it drain out. You have to toggle it on and off. Right. Well, hmm. Well, you have to keep it on, actually. Oh, yes. But then if you want to do it again... Oh, I see. So it needs a pulse to do one bucket's worth. Interesting. So we definitely need to use, you know, MFR's stuff for this. Or a computer. Or both. Or a computer. I'm going with MFR. I'm going to try and use the MFR thing. There we I have go. one manager. Do you? Nice. I'll figure out something for that. All right, so that's step one. Now the next thing I want to do is test this out. Let's see. Uh, I want a. Um, what's the vanilla name for the things that items go into? Hoppers. Hopper. Did they call it hopper and vanilla? Yep. And then BC changed the shoot. Changed it to what now? Shoot. B H U T E. Now, I'm pretty sure if I put a vanilla hopper underneath this thing, mm -hmm. it should work, right, Soren? Yep. If you right-click the uh, bat block side of the face with the hopper, it will place it so it orients the little output towards it. And I'm going to use a vanilla chest for this, just for the time being. There and there. Did it work? It worked! Excellent! That's exactly what I wanted to see. So now, those are all the components that we're going to do to automate this. But like I said, I don't want it to just pour one bucket at a time, I want it to pour seven or eight buckets at a time. So, let's break some of this stuff up. I need a little bit more clay, Soren, enough to make three more seared faucets. Ow, my feet. So I see uh, you expanded this thing, which is probably a good idea. Um, I don't think you knew I was planning to build like this giant glass making thing, but it's probably wise that you expanded it. I just know what you do to put so. Yes. Soren's got me covered. All right, so <laughs> do we still have this as a giant multi-block now? Looks good. Somehow we got seared bricks inside the smeltery. I don't know how that happened, but... So now the plan is just a few more pieces of clay, and we should be able to do this. What's happening? I'm placing the hoppers. Oh, okay. That's cool. All right, so I need, what I say, three more of these things? This all looks to be intact, so we're in good shape. I'm going to go dig up a little bit of clay, guys, and I'll be right back. 
All right, guys, we are back, and uh, Soren's hooked us up with a nifty little hopper system. I made all the stuff we need to do, so let's take a look. Um, so what do you do, Soren? You put hoppers underneath all these so that they're connected to each other? Mm -hmm. So that and when this thing pulls out, it goes to that hopper, goes to that hopper, goes to that hopper, da 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 da, da all the way along the line, and then finally ends up in the chest over here? Yep. Well, that sounds cool. All right, do you have one more hopper? Yep. Cool. Put it under this thing for me. Uh, all right. Yeah, make it facing the um, input block. So hopefully the hopper... All right, not so much, but that's okay. So basically anything we want to put into this machine can go into this input. So I'm going to put like all the sand in and it's going to start doing its thing. See, look, it's starting to populate in there already. Nice. The only thing that annoys me at this point is that because the hopper is bounding box, I can't see the progress bar. But, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So our options are to only have seven of these things around the side and like break this one. Then I can see. I like to see the progress bar. <laughs> so it's either that or, and then we, you know what we could do then if we really wanted to be nice about it is we could probably move the chest and the hopper input to this side. Yep. Yeah, let's do that. So that way the chest isn't like, you know, right in the way. A little bit of Z fighting on the glass. Uh, though. actually. Yeah, or nay? No, this hopper underneath it will pull from that hopper. Really? Yep. Oh. Uh... Because it's, yeah, it's pulling the inventory under, isn't it? Really mad to put it here. I guess so. Kind of liked it there, though. It's so cool looking. Yeah, I know what you mean. What if we put like, what if we put the chest here instead of the item hopper there, and that could be the output chest right under the okay. input chest. Ah, uh, but then we can't access that chest. Will the hopper block it? Are you sure? Test. No, Testing. actually, yeah, you should be able to open it. Yeah, put a hopper on top of it, see if it opens. We're gonna, there we go. Okay. So it's good? Like that way. Does that work? Yep, works okay. for me. I'll gravity gun it just to be cautious. Just right next to the smelter, he just gravity cunts. As a matter of fact, I want it to open this way, so... There we go. Um, cool. So we can hopper and chest here. No. <laughs> no. Like that. And then I want to make this look a little nice. How's that look? Good? So in here goes all the sand that we want to turn into the liquid metal stuff or the liquid glass. And uh, once all the sand is done melting, it should start filling up the smeltery. There we go. Looking good. Oh, cool. Half slab. Nice. Now we have to automate the, um, you know, pulling it out thing. That's going to be the part that's a little less easy. Yep. All right, so looks like it's reached max temp here. When are you going to melt into glass? I don't know. All right, let me get some... Uh, you said you have, like, a bajillion redneck cables, right? Yes. Where's your stack? Where? Oh, there. And you have um, one of those things. Oh, there we go. Redneck controller? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, that's a lot of melt. <laughs> that's a lot of molten glass. That's cool. <laughs> Look, it's all starting to melt. That's awesome. Um, That's really I'll cool. Put the lava in there. What's that? Liquiduct, I guess. Yeah, you could liquiduct lava in. 
Do you want to put after we drain out all this uh, glass? I'm gonna put yeah. a little drain in here so I can drain it in. That only after. I'm gonna pull the sand out so that it stops producing actually. Yes. So once it solidifies, it should instantly disappear and then be ready to be filled again. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, there it goes. Nice. I'm liking it. I'm thinking this is going to be cool. Oh yeah, clear glass. Alright, let me see the programmable redneck controller. And let's see what kind of trouble we can get into with this thing. So that's basically what we want to have, right? Um, now, how should we connect this? Thinking like that. Does that look good? Sure. Now, where do we want the on-off switch to be? What's that? I didn't have any levers. I have some. Just where do you want it? I'm thinking like, you want it there? <laughs> Why not? Uh, I guess that'll work. Well, we're going to want to make the, the lever orange. We'll leave everything else white, I think. Including the ingot? What's that? I want to have the ingot separate. Did I put one on top of ingot? Yeah, I didn't mean to make one on top of ingot. That's my bad. Oh. You know what we'll, we'll probably want to do then? If you want to leave the lever there. Let's see, where's, no, my, where's my thing? We don't have a controller anyway, so we need to put it right We could put it in like... Eh, no, that won't work. I was going to put it in cable-only mode. Yeah. So what we could say here is... Alright, I have to remember my programmable redneck controller training course, <laughs> which I was not quite that good at. All right, guys, let me go off camera, figure this out, because off the top of my head, I'm not really sure how to do what I want to do here, and then I'll be back. All right, guys, I think I've got this working. Uh, programmable Redneck Controller. Uh, the first page of this Programmable Redneck Controller is uh, a timer, and it's a constant timer every one second. So it's going to go on for a second, off for a second, on for a second, off for a second. Um, and I'll actually show you that right here. Let's see. Um, can I show you that? Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Mine factory reloaded. I'm looking for a particular block that I want to show this with. Rednet Historian, that's what I want. Have you seen the Historians, Soren? Yep. They're so cool. All right, that's not even close to what I need. So I'm going to need some more plastic sheets and a bookshelf. I'm just waiting for this molten glass to go down so I can change the base a bit. Oh? Yeah, for a while. Wrong. What's that? What'd you do? Don't worry about it. I'll fix. You better fix. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Did you pump lava into the wrong block? It seems so. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I didn't know that was actually possible, but okay. Well, it's a tank, so it can store any liquid, I presume, right? Yeah, but there are certain limits to what you can insert <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna put the historian here and I'm gonna set this to uh, probably be white. I'm trying to remember how to change that. Well, that's interesting, I didn't know that worked. I think it's white by default. All right, so basically what happens is we store it in a constant um, variable one. On the next page, we're doing a gated pass through, which is kind of like an AND gate. And we're basically saying if variable one is on and the blue signal is on, then emit a white signal down. So every 20 seconds, it's saying on, off, on, off. And then it's combining it with the blue signal with an AND gate. So if the blue signal's on, every 20 seconds, it's going to output a signal to the white coloring, which is, you know, what everything is. Um, and if the blue signal's off, it's not going to do anything. So let's do this here. And we should see, there we go, cool. All right, the Rednet Historian's not doing what I want it to do though, so let's get some bone meal. I thought it would be white by default, but. All right, you're not connecting then, is that what happening? I thought it would work from below, but maybe it has to actually be like on a wire somewhere. There it goes. That's neat. So you can kind of see it emitting the redstone signal and then turning off. And then it's emitting the redstone signal and turning off. If we wanted to, we could also monitor the blue signal, but I'm just monitoring white. Now there is one downside to this system, which you guys might be able to guess, and that is that, um, you know, let's say we have eight blocks of glass worth of uh, glass in here, right? What's going to happen? Well, the first seven blocks will all be, you know, put into the basins, but then the last block, well, that's going to go and kind of probably be evenly distributed amongst all the basins. So that's something we're just going to kind of have to deal with. Um, you know, worst case, I'm sure we could do something about it, but for now, I think we've got a pretty nicely automated system here. And it looks cool. I even have the Rednet Historian, which is like my favorite. I really like the Redneck Historian, and I know he has some more cool plans for it in the future, so I'm pretty excited. All right, guys, um, what's this lever for, Soren? Uh, I was trying to pump things out. I have an idea, though. Do what now? I can't control the liquid duct of which way it's pointing, so I'm filling the wrong tanks. Oh. So, um, I will do this. Oh, you're using those little things? Those things are awesome. Yeah, I can't get on that side. All right, so any... we're um we're completely out of uh, liquid glass at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna break this block. You pick up the block by chance. Did I? Nope, you did. All right. Okay. All right, guys, while Soren stops derping, we'll be back. All right, guys, we're back, all cleaned out. Um, as you may remember from a previous episode, you can just put a um, you know tank underneath one of these spigots, and it'll just dump whatever's in the inventory, and so that's what we did. We put some lava into a portable tank by putting it there. And I actually think I want to change this block. I'm going to make it not connect, because I do not want this basin to be used. So basically all the other basins, the one, two, three, four, five, six, are gonna be dedicated to glass production. This basin is gonna be dedicated to doing anything manually. This way I don't have to worry about there being liquid glass like kind of laying around. So that if um, you know they're all filled up and let's say I wanna melt some iron down or something and then dump it out into a basin somewhere, I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, now Soren, where did the where did the casting table go that was here? It's in the chest to your left. Oh, cool. Can I put it back? Yep. Okay. I'm actually going to break the thing underneath, too, because I don't want the hopper to catch it. Okay. So these guys will be manual. I can't put this in force connection mode, otherwise it won't connect to the lever. So that's why I have it orange. Um, you know, like I could tell it to output orange if I wanted to, but that's not a big deal. Okay. So now we're in pretty good shape here. So as soon as the stuff turns from sand into liquid glass, it should automatically start dumping out into the basins and turning into solid, clear glass. What do you think, Soren? I think it's a neat build. What are those levers for? 
they were to get the wallet out. Obviously, okay. they didn't work. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to manually fill this one up just so that it clears out the lava or the, you know, the basin that's there. Cool. And everything's kind of automated. All right, guys, that's how you automate a smeltery. <laughs> awesome. And I don't think we need a chest on top here now that I'm kind of thinking about it. Nope. I mean, we can just put sand in and we'll be good. I don't think we're going to want to make more than like five stacks at a time. And if we do, then we'll put a chest there. Speaking of, I'm going to put a bunch of sand in it. Hooray. All right, guys, we'll be back in a few. All right, guys, so I've been letting this run, and it's actually doing a pretty good job. It looks like the glass is kind of clearing out just as, like, the new pieces of sand start coming in and melting. So we're doing pretty good with this. I'm pretty pleased, actually. Um, we've got a bunch of this clear glass stuff happening. Nice. And I think what I'm going to be doing with this going forward is maybe even using it for a couple other things. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that I haven't played with in Tinker's Construct yet, and he keeps adding more, so it's hard to keep up. <laughs> there's uh, there's all these nifty bricks, too. Have you checked those out at all, Soren? Uh, yeah. You can make, like, these fancy, you know, redstone bricks. Emits redstone signal up to four blocks away. Oh, that's cool. Does that mean four blocks away? It'll. I, well, I gotta try that. That's what it said. Yeah. That's interesting. We need to make one of these chisels. How do you make a chisel? Um, chisel, chisel, chisel. I should be able to pull that off. Not that. That. And... What am I looking for here? Probably in the items section. Well, in redstone, though, so. Whose fault could that be? I have no idea. I need to try that just to see what that's all about. All right, where's the chisel head? I'm just going to make flint chisel. That should be good. Yeah, let's do lapis. Flint, chisel head, and tool rod. Tool rod's half as well, so that's kind of neat. So you really need one piece of material for it, like one ingot or whatever. All right, chisel one. head is flint rod, and flint chisel head is a chisel, and it's a stone-bound chisel. Excellent. What's all this for? Happiness. For what? For bricks. For bricks? Yeah, okay. Use a chisel. Joined your channel. What's, What's up, up Dyer? Oh, hey, Alex. How's it going? Oh, not bad. Uh, I'm recording at the moment, but I don't mind saying what I wanted to, what I was poking you for. Are you busy? Nope. I was just doing some stuff. I muted my stream because it was coming into this channel and didn't know what was going on. Oh, okay. Um, I was curious if you would mind doing a ForgeCraft server update for me. Uh, if right now, I... If you're streaming, right now, don't worry about it. No, I say right now I can't do that because they've been changing it so much that with the script and stuff like that, I really don't know what they've done with it anymore. Fair they enough, basically, okay. yeah, they basically automated it so much that I really it's basically been taken out of my hands. Okay. Too smart of a machine. All right, so when it says Soren that you can emit a redstone signal four blocks away, isn't this what you would expect it to be able to do? No. Place down another one. Check. There you go. Right. Sorry. So that's that's okay. Four blocks. I, I was hoping it would be like this. It's not wireless. I can something and made a redstone signal four blocks away. That doesn't make lots of sense actually. It's four blocks from the source, connected to it. Yeah. Like redstone. I was hoping it would be 15, like sixteen blocks away. It's oh, still right. fancy it's, looking it's, though. It's it's four blocks the worth of string, not right. actually. Yeah. Not like the... it's wirelessly a full block <laughs> yeah. red field. That's what I heard him say, and I was like, what? It's yeah, still cool well, looking, though. I like it. Actually. Like, that would have been weird, because last I checked, it was a direct callback to the adjacent block. Yeah. What, are you curious if that works? Where's the lapis blocks again? No, okay. Lapis blocks? Here you go. Chisel them. What's that? I, I don't think them. you can chisel them. Again. It didn't fancy lapis. 
Oh, oh it's not Lappy's blocks. It's Lappy's itself that you chisel. Oh, okay. You want that form? Uh, the one that you have on the portal here. That one? Okay. Like you're only on the chisel. There you go. I'm giving you the chisel too. Why you what? <laughs> what are you doing? One sec. Okay. Soren's scaring me. I'm going to go check in my uh, pollen collectors real quick for you guys, and then we're going to probably have to wrap up the episode. All right, this one's getting stuff. Hill cherry, walnut pollen, awesome. Pomelo, jungle, common walnut, common walnut. So you can see here, guys, that I'm doing exactly what I expected to have happen. Um, I wanted to see a bunch of pollen from different trees get collected, and I'm going to store it all in here. And the cool thing about this is now we have access to all this awesome pollen so that we can, you know, more controllably handle the, the breeding. So what you doing, Crazy Soren? Huh? Fancy. Very, very small. I'm going to keep working on this. Mm -hmm. I to yeah, chicken bones already knows the mistake of giving me like something to use. <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna let soren have fun with the chisel blocks and all that cool stuff um one thing about clear glass is it will eventually have connected textures i think at least i know mdio wants it to so then it'll all connect and i think that's gonna look really cool but we're gonna have to wait for that unfortunately it's not ready just yet but for now direwolf 20 signing off episode 36 hope you guys enjoyed it and come back next time because we have a lot more cool stuff i want to get working on there's uh, a whole bunch of things happening this is an area i cleared out it's still not doing what i wanted to do Ugh, come on. We're not having any mobs spawn on the server, and it's stinking. Oh, well. All right, guys. Take it easy.